computer. Pashas Vayikra Tashin Pebes, Shamavi, in a Madina. I'm only going to take one pasuk and a fraction of that one pasuk, and we spend, we're going to spend probably the whole shear just on it. There is a mitzvah, I should actually count it in three mitzvahs, because in Sefer HaMitzvah is counted as three mitzvahs in one pasuk, putting salt on a korban. Seems to be something very trivial, not important. But we're going to see that the Pasuk is pointing us to unbelievable things. Mamish unbelievable what uh, we're going to cover. I'm going to start by sharing a screen because there's so many Pasukim today just to prove a point and decorticate this Pasuk. No, how do I share a screen? Here, share a screen. Uh, here it is. Has the Pasuk in Vayikra base Yud Gimel. Vechol Korbanecha, Vechol Korban Minchasecha, Bamelach Timlach. All the menaches that you bring to the Mizbeach, you must put salt on them. Veloi Sajbis, Melach Beri Seleikecha, you should not destroy or eliminate the salt of the lines of HaKadosh Baruch Mincha Secha from the Mincha, like we don't understand. Okay, this is a Midras Asi. You must put salt. This is the loy, a Mitzvah Loi Sase. So it's already the second one. Sefer in case you want to see it, it's a Mitzvah Kuf Yutches and Kuf Yutches. And after that it says, Al Kol Korban Necha Takriv Melach. On all the Korban, it doesn't matter if it's a Mincha, not a Mincha. Let me ask you a question. Couldn't the terror make it easier on us? If all the carbonus, anything that goes up on the Mizbeach requires salt, why did you start the Pasuk by telling me Korban Minchascha? What the heck? What if it's not a Mincha? Am I mechuyev to put on it a, a, a Melach, salt? Yes. So it's every Korban. So what is so particular about the Mincha? Not only you, you, you build it up on the mitzvah's assay, but you build it up also on the mitzvah's lois assay here. You could have told me just that part in the pasuk, al kol korban echa takrik melach. That should have been my whole pasuk. <coughs> Understood that. Same pasuk here. And I'm probably avoiding about seven qu other questions on the Pasuk. Uh, I don't know if I had eight or seven more, but uh, just to show the lotion is so strange. Here you see, it, it's a very direct language. Alkol korban necha takriv melach. Alkol korban mincha secha takriv melach. What do you mean, bamelach timloch? Do you, do you want to tell me the amount I want to put? What if I want to put one grain? Am I Yoyte? Rambam says yes. So why is this lotion here, Bamelach Timlach? Why are you stressing it so much? And here you didn't stress it on the other carbonates. What's happening with carbs and Mincha that again, it came out at this point, at the beginning, by Korb Minchascha, we said he singled out. But here also we see singled out by the fact that you, it tells you on this one, especially you got to put a lot, I mean, salt. Since it's a mitzvah on all the Korbanas, why do you stress me on this uh, Mincha? Veloi Sashbis. You recognize that word. We're almost going to get there. But Chomet, Tashbisu Se'are Mi Batechem. What is Tashbisu? It's to eliminate. I can eliminate something that I have the whole year. I eat Chomet. That's, the, that's the, 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 the Michael we have for the whole year. On Pesach, we eat Matzah. 
Torah says eliminate the Chavetz. Yes, because it's existing. Can you eliminate something that's not existing? You didn't put Melach. Can you eliminate it? No. He should have never said that word, Tashbis, here. Me'al mincha secha, from on top of your mincha. Let me ask you a shayla here, halacha wise. Guy is not 100%. He can't stand putting things on top. He wants to make a hole in the soilest, in the mincha that he brings, the flour, and he wants to put the salt inside. According to the pasuk, is he yoitze or is he not yoitze? The Rambam, the, the Sefer HaChinuch, the Minchas Chinuch, is Yetzir. So why do you say Me'al? Why do you tell me on top? If it doesn't need to be on top. You want to say Tashbis? Fine. Velo Tashbis, Melach Beris, Eloi Kecha, Mi Mincha Secha. You don't have to tell me Me'al. Me'al means on top, from on top. But I don't have to put it on top. They don't even bring up none of the, the place can bring that there's a mitzvah to put it on top. So what is this word for here? For nothing? The third question I want to bring up is very strange in the puzzle. If you take the last letter, you see it says here, Veloi Sashbis, Melach Beris Eloi Kecha. So in the in the please pay attention. This is the loitz ase, not in the mitz, the part of which is the mitzvah ase, in the part which is the mitzvah loitz ase. Look at the last letters that I that I put in red. Melach beris eloikecha, the malach of the parnasa. In the right order, exactly like peseyach es yadecha, ches sav. That if you did not have kavana when you said to ask for your panasa, you not yoitze the mitzvah of saying ashrei, you said you should say again ashrei. And he says the whole purpose we say ashrei in the tefillah is only for those words. So it's important. My panasa depends on me saying those words with kavana. What kavana should I have here? It's in Lois Ase. I mean, I'm not allowed to do this, but my panasa is in there. Oh, really? Nothing happens. And I'm going to prove you that nothing happens just by occurrence here. This is the only time you're going to see in the Torah, Melach Beris. Every other time in the Torah, it's called, I brought another pasuk, Kola Trumas Akoichi, Beri Smelach. David Amelech, Beri Smelach, in Divrei Ayami. You will never find again those words, Melach Beris. It seems to be that the pasuk did it on purpose in order to put me the ches before the saf. And he added me the word, Eloi Kecha, to have my chaf at the end to tell me, hey, in this mitzvah here, you panasa is depending. What the heck? You're telling me not to do it. So if I'm not doing it, how can my panasa be? My panasa is proactive. It's something I need. I live on. We saw last week, panasa equals asiya equals neshama. And we saw last week that, that it's all the way up in the or hakeser. This is where I'm getting my panasa from. That's why Kadosh Baruch Hu never gave that key to anyone else. The, the, the Geshamim come from the Bina. Okay, Liana, we could have, ha could have it. But not the Keser. No human, you know, attained the, ke the Keser. Even, even, even uh, Moshe Rabbeinu only went up to the Chofra. So that's why it's only from the hand of Kadosh Baruch Hu. So I value this and I cherish it and everything. As much as in this pasuk, I know how to have my kavana, this pasuk is about, Koyer is going to read it. I'm going to read it in Shtaymin Kerbe Chatagum. 
Why are you telling me my panasa is there? I'm worried. Because everyone works hard for his panasa. Let's start the, the shira now. Now that we have seen these. Uh... Oh, I forgot another pasuk. Yashem Eloike Yisrael, Nosan Mamlacha Le David Ar Yisrael, Le Oilam Loi Urbanov Beris Melach. So Melucha, Malchus Beris Melach. Kehuna Beris Melach. But if you take Shabbos, Beris Oilam. I'm going to explain the, the, the relationship with this part, the, this psukim, um, you know, give you, give you a good uh, understanding. I'm, I'm going to go slow on that part because you need to understand, remember your panasa is right there and you want to know where, where is the key to my panasa? How can I activate it? I don't want to know that I am a tzaddik, I am a rasha. You know the door, give me the combination. That's what I'm asking. There is such a thing as getting the combination? Yes, there is such a thing as getting the combination. Bakadosh Bohu had to remove the Panasa from all the Rishayim, I mean, the world would, would, would stop. So just to tell you. Rabbi Yonasan ben Uziel, the Talmud of Hillel Azaken, who preceded by generations of Shimon by Yechai. This is what we, in, in the Mikros Gedoyres, it's called Targum Yonasan. And uh, this, by the way, after 2,300 years, we had this host this week to, 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 to bring his Torahs on the Haggadah to the printer. 2,300 years. But one, I'm telling you, it's mind boggling. I'm, so I'm going to show you a little bit of his, of his Torah. Remember, it's a top Tana, Shmaya Vartalion, the Rebbe of, of, of Hillel. That's when the story of a Hillel with the snow, he went on the window on top of the, of the shul. And his Talmud is Yonasan ben Uziel. That the Gemara says any, any bird flying over his head right away would burn. So he explains the Pasuk like this. Do you know why Hashem saying this? Do you know why I order you the bris melach, I'm not going to translate it because he's going to have different meaning. And only after we go through those meanings, I, 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 I'm going to give it a translation per possible. So do you know why we have a bris melach? It's because there are 24 offerings to the koyen that depend on it. We know that. They're, the koyen in the truma, the maestros and everything, there are 24 of them. Exactly like the Torah, the 24 books. For those who remember the Shear on Doidi, the two different Hey, Dalet Hey, Dalet Vav, Dalet Yud. Remember Doidi? That says in, in, in um, Shira Shirim equals 24. When is Akadosh Bohu cherishing Am Yisrael like his dear? is when we are capable of turning yud ke vav ke, hey, dalet yud, hey, the second hey, dalet vav. Actually, the Spartim write dalet, uh, hey, dalet vav. Ashkenazim write, which is the best Yosef, dalet yud. And, and, and just arriving in the same area, but two different roads. Arpi Kabbalah make both of them make a lot of sense. And you cannot say, oh, wow, so which one should I choose? That's how, once you understand what's going on, so you go according to, to your Minag. That's why Minag is important, because usually we all go to the, same, to the same place, the Mishkan, in the middle of the encampment. You come from the south, you come from the north, you come from the Mizrach or from the Myra. You all go, we all go to the same place. We just locate it in different direction. So from there, we know there's 24. But what relationship between the melach, the salt, and the offerings that had to be given to the coin? Oh, he says, you know what? I'll tell you what. 
because the salt the salt prevents the meat from rotting and it gives it a good smell the salt smell the 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 meat is rotting we do Shechita. Shechita is about uh, 35 feet from the Mizbeach. What relationship between, these are the words of a Tana to a level that we have is Torah something like this. It's the first generation of Tanoim that we still have books from, from the Torah. So it means it's a Torah of Hillel Azaken. From the Besamigdash itself. We used to go to the Besamigdash. We're talking about you know, when I read this, I was like, I'll never be able to answer that. I'll never be able to understand that. It probably goes to things which are much deeper than the Zoyar and, and the Ariya Kodesh. It's so early. I said, I'm going to note it, but I'm never going to be able to remember it. But now when you look in Bamidbar, I found another one, you know, from Ben Uziel, and that the second passage that talks about the Kohanim and what they had, the, the, it says Bris Melach also. And in the Pasuk there, Bris Melach, it's a different connotation. It means forever. The same way the alliance HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or the pact HaKadosh Baruch Hu made with the salt, we're going to see why, and we're going to see the reason and what it does. I'm going to take it, shred it to pieces, that Melach, until we're going to understand exactly how it works. So the, 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 um, and the same way the Malchus of David is going to be Bris Oilam. So there is a connotation of eternity in, into the Bris Melach. But in Nosan Ben Uziel doesn't learn it like this. Even though the passion of the Pasuk, you look in the Rashi, you look in, uh, in the Ramban, you look in the Rabinu Bachye, that, that, that's the way they touch up the Pasuk. But, he says something extremely, extremely strange. The same way the, the, the mitzvah of putting salt on the carbon will never disappear because it gives a good smell to the carbon. The same way, the matnas kehuna, the offerings to the Kohen, will never disappear. I can tell you something. If you can put me that touch in that puzzle, I'll call you my rock. He took the puzzle for the second time, a second puzzle, and explains it in a way which the words would not lend themselves to be explained that way. The Tana HaKadosh explained us that way. So I was searching for very old books to see uh, if they had uh, any explanation about this, uh, this Yonas and Ben Uziel. I felt on a very interesting Sefer, which is not in print. It's, uh, you, you find them in a uh, Hebrew book, very, very old. It's the Rav of Rashi, Rabbi Yitzchok ben Rabbi Yehuda Alevi, a Frenchie as the Ito calls him, the Frenchie. He was a Talmud of Rabbi Haigon, so the last of the Geoinim. The, he was the first Rishon. And his Talmud is Rashi. So he goes to Parshas Pinchas. I would like to show you the Pasuk again on this so we don't get lost, lost in the Psukim. He takes this Pasuk that we see on Rosh Chodesh, we lay in the Torah. So we're talking about the oil as tummy. Hashem says, it's my korban. Actually, if you look through the Midrashim, you see that as long as there was oil as tummy, was brought to the base of Migdash, never anything happened. Goim could not. This was our biggest defense. We had no other defense than this. When, when the, the, the Roman or all of them encircled the city and put a siege on the city, 
as long as we used, to, they used to send coffers of, of gold in order for, to have a lamp to do the oil as a tommy, morning and evening. As long as we had it until one betrayer told them that what protects us is the, is the oil and they put, they put uh, a PIG uh, in it, and when he got middle of the Choyma, it was designed with these, with these claws, I don't know what he called it, claws or uh, hooves, hit the Choyma and it broke. Just to show you the value of oil as Tamid. And HaKadosh Baruch says, Korbani Lachmi. Explain the, the, the Panea Raza, that's the name of his Sefer. You see Lachmi here is the same letters as Milchi, my soul. I mean, we're talking about the first Rishon. Don't we have a Pasuk clearly talking about the Chiyuv to put salt on a Korban? You really have to come and make me a Limud from a Pasuk that you really go for a stretch. Oh, we understand. Lechem and Melach, they have the same letters. Oh, Moichel, Mochal, and, and, and Melach and Lechem have the same letters. Oh, Leuchem, okay, I got it. This is one of the words that can be read four ways. No problem, no problem. However, for the mitzvah of Melach, we have a clear pasuk that states it. And you know what he says when he explains this pasuk, the Panea Raza? the Rav of Rashi, he says, do you know why we have to put Melach? Because when after the Bnei Israel cross Yama Melach, you hear me well? When they crossed Yama Melach, Yama Melach went to HaKadosh Baruch who says, you always pay people for doing good deeds. You never restrain uh, yourself from paying them. What do I get from this? HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him, forever we're going to use you on the Mizbech. But he does not explain what he explains in Parshas uh, Pinchas. That, that Lachmi is Milchi and there's an obligation to put Melach. Thinks I mean, I gave you early Tanoim, early Rishonim. It makes no sense. This bris melach seems to be a tunnel that has no way out. There's no way out of it. How to make sense of all this? Uh, stop here. The Sefer Achinuch realized I didn't mention the Zoyer, I didn't mention Ari Kodesh yet, I didn't mention anything. I'm just mamish in pshat. I'm just stating what's written in the Mikroiske Doilers in everything, in Halacha and nothing else. Sefer Achinuch Mitzvah Kuf Yudches <clears throat> says the following. There are five reasons why we bring, there's a, there's a chiv to bring the salt onto the, on every carbon. It gives a good smell, like we've seen in the Targum Yoyinasan. To straighten up the person that brings the carbon, the high shear, to straighten him up. Really? So I bring salt to the Mizbeach, I'm straightened up. The guy comes and he's a hunchback. He puts salt on the Mizbeach, boop, he's straightened up. The same way a person would not eat meat with that salt, he should not offer meat to HaKadosh Baruch Hu with that salt because it goes according to your test. You don't like it, don't offer something you don't like. Not that it really makes full sense, but you know, I can hear that it has to be something I like. 
the four reason. And the fourth reason is because the salt has the capacity to prevent rottening. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on all the destroying all these, uh, these, um, these reasons. I'm just going to tell you the following. How much salt we had to put? Even one grain. Does it prevent from rotting? When you, they used to keep stuff, they used to pack salt all around. The salt can cook. So they used to pack salt all around the meat. We're not talking about this. So what are you telling me here? Four reasons, you know, on the salt, HaKadosh Baruch who wanted salt. At least the Paneya Raza tells me a reason because Yama Melach. By the way, if you look, if you look in the Gemara Noches, Mitzvah Lechatchile to bring Melach Sedoimis. Not just any Melach. You are Yoitze, but the Mitzvah, it's like someone davening after the third hour. He was Yoitze, his Tfilah, but he lost Mitzvah's Tfilah. Here, you are Yoitze, the Korban, but you not Yoitze, the Mitzvah of Melach. Mitzvah of Melach is to bring Melach from Zdoim. Zdoim, the worst place on earth. Worst people. To the point that the, the Moshe David Valley the, the, the rub of the Ramchal explained, Eime Kasidim is the valley of the Shadim. All the evil spirits used to gather there. That's why the war between the four and the fifth and the five kings was right there. It has a tremendous, Arichus on this, uh, tremendous explanation. So you want me to go to the Mizbeach on the Corbin. So usually, Look at the Rashi right there. A person that it's, he brings his own nefesh when he brings a carbon. Why? Because he knows whatever was done to the carbon was supposed to be done to him. Mizbeach is mechaper. Carbon is mechaper. But now you're telling me that without the melech, none of them, the koyach of kapara of the carbon and the mizbeach is gone. So you should have never said that mizbeach is mechaper. Melach enables. Melach is the key. He has a potential Mizbeach, but he, da, he cannot do it unless he has Melach. Should, should be clear. Things should be very clear. So how can you tell me now that, that, that for so many reasons, like the Minchis Chinuch, the, the, uh, uh, the Sefer Chinuch, states, you know, that this is the reason we bring Melech. We haven't been able to find one valid reason. Let's jump to Rabnu Bachia. It's going to become much easier. Uh, we finished with, uh, with the part that, you know, you had so many. I just wanted you to understand in this pasuk, there are different components and none of these components really make sense. We had three things. First thing is the Mincha. Why is the, min the Pasuk stresses out the Mincha? The second thing is why Melach Timlach stresses also the need of salt by the Mincha, by, by other Korbanis is much lighter. Bring Melach. The second thing is why is the name of the Malach of the Panasa? I mean, it's not the Malach really, it's one of the 72 names of Akadosh Bochu, and this name is in. Uh, the 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 loisase of the melech, the mitzvah of melech. Why is he there? What what, what what is he doing there? And and the third components we wanted to understand is what is the reason. You know the Torah is so stressed that we have to bring melech. Oh, by the way. Melach equals 78, yes. Just like bread, right? Lechem, some letters. Mabul equals 78. Mabul is the same letters as Melach, only the ches, instead of being a ches in the middle, is Besvav. 
interesting, right? Melach Mabu. Sdoim Melach. Hmm. Then Mizbeach, you got to bring the Melach from Sdoim into the Mizbeach. And that's the mitzvah. This is where we stand. Rabnu Bachir comes and explains, you know what's the strength of the Melach? The Melach is made out of water and fire. So it has these two components. And because of these two components, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world at the beginning, the worlds before us, that's hinted at the end of the Parshas Vayishlach. I'm not going to go into it. It's a very uh, Kabbalistic Indian. It's called the Melachim Kadmayin. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. But um, the previous world, it was always by Midas Adin, and the world could not sustain itself because any chet that a person does, it's like Moirid Bemarchus, like disrespecting the kids, like rebelling. Chayev Misa. Midas Adin cannot rule this world. And that's the reason HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to show that this world is ruled by, by two components. Midas Arachmim, the Chasadim, it's the, it's the Mayim, represented by the Mayim, and the Din, which is the Esh. Aha. Uh -huh. In other words, the world stands on Melech. Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says, you know what? The whole world, the kiyum of the oilam, the whole world stands on this melech. We had surprises a little bit before, right? With the uh, Yonas and Benuziel, with uh, the Panea Raza, the Rav of Rashi. You know, we had a level of surprises. But to that level, usually Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar explains I mean, dug us into a hole that it's extremely hard now. What do you mean the whole world? I have a Mishnah in Pirke Avois from the Tanoim. With all the respect I owe and I love Rabbi Nubachir. There's not a week I don't learn it. But please, Shimon and Atzadik. All the second Mishnah in Pirke Avois, Shimon and Atzadik. Hayam Mishayare Knesset Agdoila was from the last of the Knesset Agdoila. Who Hayame? He was saying, Al Shloisha de Varima Oilam Oymet. The world stands on three pillars. Not one, three. Ala Toira, Vala Avoida, Val Gemilus Hasadim. Toira, Avoida, and Gminus Hasadim. Do you see Malach here, you? I don't see Malach. I mean, Rabbi Bachi, were you bringing me your pshat? Yeah, it's nice to tell me that Melach is Esh and Mayim. I understand that. The Melach can cook, and, 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 and it also comes from the, from, the, from the ocean, you know? Not any ocean. It has to be Yama Melach. Remember for the mitzvah, it has to be from the Melach's doim. Melach se doimis. Okay, now that we got to, 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 uh, to this part, the Gemara says, I want to bring in, an, uh, um, before we start getting out of the hole, I would like to bring a Gemara. And I, I, I said, you know what? I have to mention a Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer to you, even though it's a little bit out of subject, but it's so beautiful and mind boggling and so much and up to the, to the midstream that I said, people should hear about this. God does Rabbi Eliezer Hagado, the, the Rav of Rabbi Akiva. Oh, what a Torah. It's going to get us out of our Melacha for a second. So the Gemara says, Bamelach team, so the Gemara asked the question we had, what do you have to stress me about the soul? Yochel bemei melach. Maybe I'm going to take ocean water that's salty or from, uh, from the Yama Melach and I'm going to pour on the carbon, I'll be yoitzi. 
So Torah tells you, no, Bamelech, he has to be grains of salt. It means you have to dry the water first. Once you're going to have the salt from me, then you're allowed to put this on the one shot and acceptable. You know, this is a Gemara Nachas. You know, I can hear I, 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 uh, this calms me down a little bit about one question we had. Now let's go our ascension out of the hole. And you're going to see how everything's going to fall in place. It's pretty amazing. Birkid Rabbi Eliezer. Oh, it's going to be mind boggling. It's so beautiful. Birkid Rabbi Eliezer says, you know, when Paro decided, and he saw in the, that Goyalam Shad Israel, that uh, the savior of Hebnei Israel will be born, Bilam told him, you know what? You throw to the to the lake, I mean to the Nile, all the kids. That's what he did. What did Akadosh Bochu do? Akadosh Bochu was Metzave, the Sara of the Nile. Reject them on the other bank in the midbar. He took two stones, one stone would feed them honey. And the second stone would bath them with oil. As it says in the Pasuk, in the Varim, so it's in the Torah, it's not uh, anything. Let me show it again. So I'll show you the Pasuk because we're going to start really getting up on this. Vayenikehu uh, devash misela. He made him suckle uh, honey from a stone. Veshemen and oil mechalmish sur. You, you guys can open your microphones if you can. If someone can translate me these two words. So I know it's a rock. Chalmish, what is this? Um, it's a rock. The Zoya says it's a harder rock than the Tzor. I was just asking. Uh, so how is it possible? So here you give me a Sela. And, uh, the, and the shaman was coming from two rocks. What, what's Chalmish Sur? The Lashon is very, very complicated. There is another Pasuk when uh, Moshe Rabbeinu hit the rock and they got water from the rock after Miriam uh, passed away and the bear stopped get, uh, giving its water, which is, by the way, the same rock. Uh, it says, Ahoyfchi had Sur. He, he returned the rock into Agam Mayim, into a pond of water, Chalamish, and the rock into a Mayan, a river of water. You guys can, oh, if, if anyone has a shot on this passage, please open your, your microphones. I mean, no, no question. Again, he turned the rock into a pond of water and the rock into. Uh, so let, let me give you explanation according to the Zaira here because you remember we started in the Shior again I told you about the hay and the hay the hay of Dalitude the hay of Dalit Vav Doi D so so when we spoke in Paris of Ayakhel it was only about the side of our Baim, so we had the whole Yud Kevav Ke. Here we only have the, the two Hays this week, Doidi, the 24. So that's the Bina, the Ima, Ila. So this is the Bina. The Bina is always the mother of the Malchus and provides the Malchus whatever he can. So the, the Bina came out with the pond of water, then Chalamish, which is supposedly the Malchus, came out with the river of water. How can the, if you're receiving, if I give someone $100, does he have 150 in the hand? He has 100. If the Bina comes out with a pond of water, where do you get the river from? Look at this. Let's play with the words a little bit. Chalamish, right? Chalamish. Letters, yesh melach. 
what? Oh, it's a coincidence, right? A coincidence. Look at this pasuk. Chalamish lemayinoi mayim. First letters. Ches lamed mem. Backward. Me lach. Me lach. Second. Oh, coincidence, coincidence. Let's keep on again. Chalamish. Melach. Lamed mem. First two, le uh, two letters of melach. One letter of melach. Mem. Lamed mem. And the full, the full melach. This is called the achoy rhyme. When when a word is broken, like eloikim, the word eloikim, aleph, aleph lamed, aleph lamed hey, aleph lamed hey yud, aleph lamed hey yud mem. This is called the back of the name. So we know how when we see words in the Torah, we know exactly, and usually the back is not the best place. So just. For you to know. So here we have the back, the front, and confirmation yesh melach. Do you really think it's possible this is coincidence? What is the melachs got to do here with the tzur when Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, hit the... So the Zoya says, you know, melach is very important. Actually, the whole world stands on it. Like who? Oh, Rabbi Lubachia said that. We didn't understand. And he brings a pasuk, the Zayar Kodesh. He says, Im loi berisi yoimam valayla. Im loi berisi, if I had not created this line, this pact, yoimam valayla, chukoi shamayim va'aretz loi samti. Day and night, uh, the rules of skies, heavens, and earth, I would have not put up. Which aligns? You, everybody tells us, you know, all the touch is Torah, 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 right? Torah is this bris. Zohar Kodesh says, no, Melach. You're telling me the skies, the, 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 the sun, yes. On the Melach, yes. Are it on the Melach, yes. It, it, that it turns around the sun, yes. The day that, it, yes. Laila, yes. Everything Melach. So Melach is the center of the world. Melach is the center of the world, the Zoya says. Wow. Why did I miss? Uh oh. I'm missing a page here. I deleted it. Uh, so, let me go for the control Z. Okay, so, so sorry, uh, I, I, I lost, uh, I deleted it by trying to copy, I select, and then uh, I delete. Um, so we said before, so let, let, let's take it as a base because now we'd like to answer everything. Sur is the Bina, is the highest part. It's a softer rock. Chalamish is the Malchus because he has the din inside it and, and it's, it's harder. In this pasuk that we, we, we mentioned before, if you look at it, uh, share screen. I'm going to go back to the original and we're going to stay on this one. Let's go back. I think I can finish this on. Okay, look at this. Melach, 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 Melach. First time it says, Ba Melach, the second time Timlach, the second time Melach, Melach. If you take, just, we're gonna take the Melach, Melach. Let, let's try to understand. Melach equals 78, 78. 166, it's four times. Always when, remember from last week, I, I give you every week, I add you new rules for you to understand the, the, the deeper word. I mean, the, the soy, the premise of the Torah. Every week I add you something. So keep in mind, whenever you have a number that comes four times, mean you surround it on the four sides. So 
four times. Yud ke vav ke kehye, chachma bina equals these two. Basically, the melach somehow is right under the keser by the chachma and the bina. Okay, I don't know how to explain it yet. Let's go one thing at a time. If you're taking in the, in the pasuk here that we ask this question about lemayim or I remember what I what was it deleted now. This it doesn't tell you it didn't come to give you a quantity of water. Because he should have said mayan mayim. What he means le mayenoi. Almost le maanoi. This is not translatable, this word. I couldn't find really the proper translation on this word. So you calculate this equals 296, exactly the word so. Chalamish, if the Pasuk tells you he got the shefa as usual, always from, and it's always in the Pasuk. When you, there's a traceability always in the Pasuk where it comes from. Look at the proof. We said here, Chalamish lemainoi moi. We had, again, the Melach constructed, Mem, Mem Lamed, Mem Lamed Ches. What happens to these letters? Yud Shin, Ayn Yud Nun Vav, Yud Mem. They're written, right? What do you come here to tell me? They equal to 496, exactly Malchus. Malchus, Bina, proven, and Melach. Oh, that's where you stand. That's why I have the two Hays. Exactly. You know what the Zoya says? The Zoya says on it, it's like, you remember that Aleph we had, Yud on top, Yud at the bottom, Vav in the middle? Mine from the top, mine from the bottom, rakia in the middle. This is the Aleph. This is how the water came down to the Malchus and provided to the Bnei Israel. Mine Elyoinim to Mine Tachtoinim through the rakia into the into into the rock. Wow, these were not just water. These were Mine Elyoinim. This is how they came from. Interesting to learn about uh, So I'm gonna stay on the passage here. And I would like to add one, uh, because it's striking that we explain the passage in Louis Barisi out of the shot of the Rishonim that he talks about the Torah. If the Torah was not created, then Shemaim Baris would not be. The Zayar in Pasha's Bereshis says, HaKadosh Bochu made five Berisos with Abraham Avinu. Only five. In Brisbane's Abesarim, beforehand, he was always Bris Esh, the Din. But HaKadosh Bochu made five with us. Which are the five? And he spelled them out. Bris Mila, number one. Bris Melach, number two. Bris Hakeshes, the... What do you call this in English again? The rainbow. The, 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 the rainbow bris, HaKadosh Baruch doesn't bring marble, is number three. Bris Kehuna, that there's always going to be Koyhanim, is number four. And bris Hayisurim, guarantee that a person through his life is going to have Yisurim. This is a bris. These are the only five. It doesn't say Brish Toire, it doesn't say Brish Shabbos, it doesn't say anyone who wants to invent me another Brish. Please, Epshin Bar Yochai in the Zohar, he was a Tana, learning with the Neshama of Meshach Rabbeinu. Only say that. Now we understand then, the Brish Melach is really, really, really important. So now, 
let's close with the, with, with the first pasuk we started and we're going to understand. Share screen. What is a mincha made of? Flour, soilus. Are you stressing me here that bread and salt should always go along? Because in that case, I can answer why he went to the, 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 the Rav of Rashi, the, the, the Panea Raza went to Bamidbar to explain me the Chiv of Melach. Karbani lachmi, because he takes bread, and this is where he wants to stress you, not the din of Korban and Melach. He wants to stress you the din of Lechem and Melach. Why Lechem and Melach? What do they have together? Because Lechem and Melach are your panasa. Oh, really? Yes. The proof is that's where it says exactly the name. You trigger when you. So Daria Kodesh is very makpid. Parashas Ekev in Tamea Mitzvahs at the end of Parashas Ekev. There's always Tamea Mitzvahs of the Parsha. He explained all about the Achila. But I'm going to prove it beyond the shadow of a doubt. Um, that, that, that before you even say the Moitzi, you should have the salt on the table. Why? Because when, like, like Friday night for the Suda, like when we wash hands and we're waiting on each other, Am Israel is standing at this point without mitzvahs. And we should have the mitzvah of the salt on which the whole world stands in front of us. And it's going to be mind boggling well, the way I'm going to finish. But you will see this is. Huh? I'm sorry? Okay. So we, we will see the importance why is the Torah stressed this so much? Mincha, Mincha, it's taken out from all your carbonates because there's a din in carbon and there's a din in your life. The Torah hints here the panasa of a person. Soilless flour should never be besides matzah on Pesach. We never do bread without salt. Okay, very good. Now, if you take the number of letters in this pasuk, the 65. 65 equals Adoi Alef Dalet Nun Yud, which is also Dina. In other words, we're going to retrace. I don't want to read, you know, every time we repeat because we're going to waste a lot of time. But what Rabbi Nubachia said, Esh Maim, Din and Chesed. I have my Chesed, the Panasa here, but if you don't do it, you have 65 letters, and Alef Dalet Nun Yud can, can also make the letter D no, Dalet Yun Nun Alef. You go into a Din. Oh, that's the Asian mind? Yes, that's the Asian mind. To leave, do you need your Panasa? Yes. So you stand on what? On Melach and Lechem. Yes, you stand on Melach and Lechem, exactly like the Rishonim said. This is the key of a person. We still have to prove that the kingdom of the world, but now we see that the kingdom of the person is in a very simple thing. Have always, Dari HaKodesh used to leave actually all the time, uh, salt on the table from week to week. Even on the Shabbos table, he used to leave salt because it takes away the chitzonim, the, 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 the cleansing part of the Melach is the reason, the very reason HaKadosh Baruch Hu put Yama Melach over Sdoim. If you take a regular ocean, you have life in it. You have fish, you have plants, you have, you have a whole I mean, of life in, in living in the ocean. In Yama Melach, you have nothing. Only shading and spirits. They made, they rot that place so it had to be cleansing. Melach is a cleanser. Is not only a cleanser of chatoim, 
It's a cleanser even of evil spirit. That's why you need it absolutely that your shulchan is a mizbeach. So what? You're sitting with the nachash. Oh, really? When I sit on my Shabbos table, the, the nachash, the yitzara is there? Yeah. Look up Sachim M. Tesamut Beis. At the head of the table, the Satan is sitting. He's waiting for you to, to, uh, to be uh, disrespectful to the Mizbeach. And the proof is that Shulchan is the letter's Nachash. He's right there. How do I get rid of it? Oh, my salt and my bread? Yes, your salt and your bread. Not only you get rid of him, but on top of this, you Zoichet to Panasa. Wow. I'm getting a bit attracted to that pasuk a little bit more. Um, very quickly, because uh, I, I, um, I, I know it would be a bit longer than, uh, than usual. If you take the reason, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, um, if you take Melach and you open it to Mem, Lamed, Ches, you know, as I spell it out, equals 572, 22 times the name of Hashem. Connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, yes. Because when the water was separated on my separations, we call them Mayim Boichim, they cry those waters. Why are we safe, separated? The Zohar said they were crying, we want to be next to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yesterday we were next to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. why were we separated? So HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave them the salt. What has the salt? The 22 Yud Kevav case that you have in the letters of the Torah is in that salt. Wow. When I put the salt on my table, you understand the power of what I'm putting on Lechem? You understand that the letters of Lechem are Loichem, fighting? And you have to, you thought the Lechem is the good one, right? No, the Melech is the good one. Because Anything that the materialistic that you're going to eat and everything, this poison from the evil spirits that attach themselves to it. So they're going to become part of you in order to prevent this to happen and then bring choshech on you, you need the melech. Melech sedoimis is even bigger, we said, as a mitzvah. L look how interesting. Melech sedoimis equal 598, 23 times the name of Hashem. I just want to give you a last one. Um, if I wrote it on this one, I know I wrote it. We had, I took in the puzzle. Let me, let me find it here. Um, where am I looking? Say, Greece. Look for Tariag. This is probably the biggest. I had a shock myself. Remember we said, you cannot eliminate something that you don't have. And that's the only time we're going to find them inverted. So all these words were basically telling me that something is huge hiding behind it. Equals to 1,839. I couldn't find anything of that value. But then I started dividing it and I realized it's three times exactly Tariya. You do a mitzvah, you do something is one thing. The mitzvah of Melach has the power to be mekayim do'il yoinim, means when you do a korban, what it does, it enables, so when you, someone does a chet, automatically took a part of the Gdusha, sent it to the other side. With the Melech, you bring it back. With the Melech, you are straightened up. Now, because you, you, it's a cleanser. With the Melech, also, not only you affected these two things, but also in Shemaim, everything is put back into place. Now you're standing before, and trust me, I only gave you the, the high layer. This Melech is beyond mind-boggling, but one thing you can take from the shear. Before you wash Natilas Yadaim, make sure that your melech is on the table. Have it Friday night. Shabbos, the lechem should always be on the table before your Shabbos comes in. 
so the melech, the, the bread should never be alone. Whenever you have bread on the table, you should have the melech. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should give you all a panasa b'shefa. You know that you're triggering 23 names of Hashem. You know that you're triggering all the letters and you have three times taryag. It's a tremendous chos. And once you do this and you have this simple kavana, for this you should be zoiche to the, because you're triggering the name of Hashem of the panasa, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give you a panasa. Have a great Shabbos. Ugh. And uh, it's not that difficult to remember. <laughs>